In this video, we're going to tackle a problem in one dimension using Newton's second law. Remember, Newton's second law tells us the vector sum of all the forces on one object is equal to the mass of that one object times the acceleration of that one object. The problem we'll look at is Alice, 60 kilograms, is climbing a rope that goes over a massless pulley that is attached to a box of mass 100 kilograms that is a one meter off the ground. What is her acceleration up the rope if the box is hovering motionless? How many students, when first reading that, are a little, uh, what? <laughs> so let's just start with a picture and see what we can do. So here's a picture. I have a massless pulley over which I have a rope. I have Alice climbing on one side, and the other side is attached to a box, and I know the masses. I don't know the tension in the rope, though because the pulley is massless, I know the tension is everywhere. I still may not know exactly how to solve this problem. And so as just part of my brainstorming, I'm going to apply Newton's second law and, and see what happens. First says I have to choose and isolate an object because it only applies to a single object. Well, I'm gonna choose the box to start with. And I want to know Alice's acceleration, but the fact that she's climbing up the rope is confusing to me. The box is motionless. And I think it plays a role here, so I'm just going to look at that first and, and see what I learn by studying it. Next, I, what I want to do is find the forces on that object. Well, there's the force due to gravity, and there's a tension force due to this rope. And the tension force then has some magnitude t, and it's up. The force due to gravity has a magnitude equal to the mass of the box times the acceleration, and its force is down. So now I want to find the vector sum of those forces. I'm going to use a free body diagram where I represent the object is a point. I have my vectors pointing in the direction that the forces act. Tension up, force of gravity down. I've indicated a positive direction, which is up. So in one dimension, I can identify my vector forces as the magnitude with the sign being equal to the direction of the force. So I have a positive tension force added to a force of magnitude mass of the box times the acceleration due to gravity times minus one, since it is pointing in the negative direction. So I set these forces, the sum of these forces equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of that object. But I was told that this object is motionless, so its acceleration is zero. So the sum is equal to zero. So I've learned something. If I just solve that for the tension, I find that the tension in the rope is equal to the mass of the box times the acceleration due to gravity. Well, that's useful information. I know that the tension is, is the same everywhere along the rope because the pulley itself is massless. So what's next? Well, let's look at Alice. So now I'm going to isolate Alice as an object. Next is to find all the forces on the object. Well, what, what are the forces? Well, there's the tension in the rope that's acting up, and there's also the force of gravity acting down, and, and that's it. What about the fact that, well, she's climbing up this rope, and so she's grabbing the rope and, and all of these other things? That's happening, but that doesn't really play the role in Newton's second law. We want to find the forces on the object, and so we need an agent. And the agent is the rope, and it exerts a tension force on the object, and that's all we can say. You may have noticed that the rope extends beyond Alice. And why I haven't identified a tension with that force that is crossing the purple barrier around Alice. And that's a good point. I don't think I mentioned that in the, the tension model. For there to be tension, it has to be attached to two objects with mass. If one end is just hanging in my sort of tension model of ideal ropes and not attached to something with mass, then there's no tension in that part of the rope. So there's only tension acting up and the only other force is gravity. So those are the only forces acting on Alice. And so I can just go ahead and continue on with my Newton's second law analysis. I'm gonna sum the vector forces. I'm using a free body diagram. I have a dot representing my object, my forces in the appropriate direction tension up, force of gravity down, and I'm choosing up to be the positive direction again. Translating them into my one-dimensional notation, I have a force of magnitude t in the positive direction added to a second force 
with a magnitude mass of Alice times the acceleration due to gravity pointing in the negative direction. These are set equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object, which in one dimension has this magnitude. The problem says that she's accelerating up, so I know that that is positive. This is the information I have so far, that the tension in the rope is equal to the mass of the box times g, and that the tension minus mass of Alice times g is equal to mass of Alice times the acceleration. Do I know everything? Well, I have two equations and two unknowns, tension and the acceleration. So I can, in fact, solve for the acceleration. I don't need to know any more information. I don't need to know the complicated interaction between Alice and the rope as she climbs. All I needed to know was this analysis of the forces acting on her. So we can go ahead and solve. I substitute tension from the first equation into the second, and I get that expression. Now I want to solve for A by dividing both sides by the mass of Alice, and then I factored out the G, and I get the final expression for A. So does this make sense? And it does. I have this difference, mass of the box minus mass of Alice. That means that the mass of the box has to be greater than the mass of Alice. And that makes sense. If Alice has a larger mass, then if she were just holding onto the rope stationary, she would accelerate the box upward. So if then she were to accelerate upward, exert even a greater force, create even a greater tension, it would accelerate more. So it makes sense that for this system to be true, for this condition to hold the box be stationary, that the mass of the box has to be greater than the mass of Alice. I can go ahead and put in numbers and solve, and I get an acceleration of 2 thirds g, it's not too crazy, so I'm as confident as I can be that this is the right answer as well.